Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at putting design options into Twinmotion and how we can view them in different ways and actually work with design options from Revit. It's it's not as easy as you'd like it to be because it's not necessarily something built into Twinmotion, but what we're going to end up doing is just playing with the visibility and different imports to get the design options that we want to work with and view in Twinmotion in a different way. So if you happen to learn something, any point in this video, demol please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, maybe you just end up liking the video, so definitely demolish it for that as well. It helps me out. Okay, getting into it now. So I have, we've seen this house. It's just a kind of a basic house. It's you know a basic Revit model. Really nothing special is going on here. But the main thing I want to highlight is that I have set up different design options. And so we've got design option one. We've got two. And we can see two by updating the view here. There's two. And I really all I've done here is just extend the garage so it's it's wider. That's really it. And so looking at design option three, we can see that now I have set up a little shed off to the side. So I have not quite done a lot, but the idea is that we can take this into twin motion. We're gonna have these three separate design options that we want to look at in twin motion at the same time. And of course, there's a number of ways that we can do this, but you know, it's it is unfortunately that it, within Twin Motion, there's no real way of you know having design options set up and then coming from Revit. So the idea here is that we end up pressing C in Twin Motion and we take this to Twin Motion, and that's all fine until we want to look at a different option. And so what happens there is that, and you know, I'm going to go through this now. We'll end up showing you. So let's go to option one. And I'll click C into Emotion. That's fine. I want this to be a new project. I'll click OK. And then I get it. You know, my model is here. Cool. You know, this is not all that crazy. This is very simple. But when it comes time to updating this, and you know, I actually don't have any materials applied to this, but when it comes to updating this model, we can see there it is. You know, that's the name of the material, uh, sample house materials. That's the name of the model. Now, when it comes to updating in Revit, you know, looking at a different design option, I found that to get this to correctly work and not crash Twin Motion, you can't necessarily go into the to the design option itself. What I've had to do is keep the design option set to you know looking at the main model, but change the view to point at a particular option. So in this case, I'll change it here. We can see that you know yes. I have, I'm now looking at option two and I'm in the main model. So now I can click C in Twin Motion and we can see this all update. And so with this updated in Twin Motion, I can see, you know, yeah, I have my design option, but I still have one model. Like this is just one model. And so really all it did was override the model I had here. And now it's displaying this entirely separate model that I have in the second option. That might be fine if you want to literally switch between one option and the other, but the problem becomes that you can't view them all at the same time. You know, if we want to have that, maintain that live link, it's just not going to work from Revit, unfortunately. So Revit here, you know, what how, what are we going to have to do? Well, I'm going to go back to option one and change that change that here in the design options to option one, and then I'll send this back to Twinmotion. So there we go. I have option one here. And so you know, whatever you want to do. If you want to rename this, we we will go ahead and rename this to option one. It's just, it's nicer that way. And so at this point, we have a couple of options, <laughs> of course, design options. Um, we can bring, we could have done it all this way. We could end up importing each single design option as its separate FBX file that we would regularly end up exporting from Revit or we can keep one of them as the live link and the other two as the FBX models. I will say if you want to be completely organized and, you know, don't want to have any issues with live linking, then it's probably best that you just have each option as its own FBX file. And as it updates, as it changes in Revit, then just re-export that FBX and then go from there. Not too difficult. And then you just re-import it here. Very simple. And so what we're going to have to do something similar to that. It's just kind of the nature of it, unfortunately. But at this point, I want to come back into Revit and I want to change my, of course, my design option from one to two. I will now export this. 
Make sure you have no merge set up. We want this set up the exact same way. I'll export this here. I've already done this once before, so I'm gonna end up overriding these, which is not a big deal. This takes basically no time at all. And then there we go. I will then change my option to three. We will export this one again. No merge, of course, overwrite this option three. And this should take just a second. And when this is done, we're gonna go back to Twinmotion and end up importing these in. So here we go. So back to Twinmotion here. I'll click import, open, and then we will choose the location. There's my option two. And under the options here, make sure you collapse and keep hierarchy. Yes, make sure to keep hierarchy. Click OK, there we go. And this is this is a very important part because now we're literally importing what might end up being the exact same model on top of itself to a degree. And that comes with materials, of course. I have applied no materials in Revit except to the fact that I have I have the materials applied, but nothing, no maps, no texture, no nothing like that. So it's you know organized in a way. And because this is the same model, it's saying, well, I have a conflict because I'm bringing in the exact same material from this second model. And so like, what do we do? Well, you know, it's kind of up to you, but if you want to make things a little easier on yourself, I would just recommend that you use the same material because maybe you have applied a certain material to this and you've changed this and whatever, and it will update all. And this will apply to all materials because we have every single material that is set up. Now you can keep them both. And that just means you have, you know, in this case, an exterior concrete one, and then you have a second exterior concrete one from the second model. That's chaotic. You don't need that many materials <laughs> by any means. Or if you're like, oh, I just made it all beautiful in Revit, then just use the imported material and it will come from Revit. It'll take that material and it'll look nice because I didn't do that. Everything's great. And I don't care about that. So I want twin motion. That's fine. So there we go. It's going to import. Boom. And so the, the thing to be aware of here is that I have option one, of course, and then I have option two, and it's literally on top of itself. And it because there's only a slight change, it just it shows that just the garage is getting wider. Okay, well, then we're going to do this one last time, but make sure we do this with option three. And of course, you can do this with as many as you want. And I wish there was a better way of live linking. It's just kind of the way it is. We'll keep the hierarchy here. Okay, we're gonna get the exact same material issue here. I want to use the same material, that's fine. And so I'll bring all this in. And so now we have three, literally three models on top of each other. We have option one, two, and three. And you can see as I hide one or the other that they all start to show up. Now, th this is fine. You know, this is not the end goal here, but this is unfortunately what we're stuck working with. We're stuck working with the fact that we have three models on top of each other. And we want to begin to organize this in a way. Now, the nice thing about the way we brought in the materials is that I can replace a material, for instance, one of these walls. Now let's just show option one, just because so we can work with only one model. But now maybe I want to add a material, of course. I'll change my glass here to maybe be a reflective glass. Maybe what I want to do is add some, some wood siding here. You know, this is not bad at all. I will update the scale. Maybe that's more like 10. Maybe more like 12. Okay, so it's mostly wood. And that's fine. Maybe that's a good start. And so from there, we realize, okay, even the ground. We'll go ahead and add a material to the ground. So there we go. And then put that up to maybe 10, 5, 10, somewhere in there. That's pretty good. You know, it's it's looking like a house. Now, the cool thing is the reason why we imported things the way that we did is that I can hide option one, everything goes away, show option two, and then suddenly, not just suddenly, but in the fact, whenever I applied the materials to one, it applied it to all of them because I literally replaced that material and they're all the same material. So I can jump between these three options and it's all fully materialized already. It's that simple and really nice. And now that's fine. You know, we're, we're still looking at something that is essentially just <laughs> the same model three times. Maybe I want to add some water out here just to give it actually the real lake effect that it, it currently is. So there's my water. And as I go from one to the other, of course, in this case, I didn't replace that, that material. I applied it to an object. So I want to make sure I replace that material and put that water right there so it will show up within every option. Okay, so we're to a good point. And this point is we have each of the three models and maybe we've taken the time to 
add our materials. And the nice thing about that that we just showed is that those materials are populated everywhere, which is cool. And so now it's a matter of how do we organize this in a way to where maybe we're working with a designer. We want to flip between one option and the other to see what we're looking at. Maybe we want to put this in a way to where it's kind of a presentation. You know, we're, we're showing off our different design options to a client, maybe just the designer, maybe someone else in the firm, and they want to see the design options. Well, you can do this that we're literally doing right here, flipping one on, flipping the others off. Like that's not hard, <laughs> but the point is maybe we want to work with something that's a little easier, you know, something that is still clicking a button, but looks more <laughs> appealing. It seems like it's working a little more for us. So we can do a couple of things here. And what I want to show is the scene states. And so really, if you remember what we're doing here, it's literally just changing the visibility of one particular option to the other. And I'm just using different ways of showing and hiding these models. That's it. That's all I'm doing. But scene states is going to do that exact same thing ish. But the thing that's different is that I'm just choosing to show one scene state or the other, which is just you know, visibility, what is currently visible. So let's go ahead and add three scene states here. Of course, I want to rename these option one, two, and three. So we are better organized. Please do that so you don't confuse yourself or anyone down the line. Option one, two, and three. So we got option one, two, and three. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn option one and two off. We don't necessarily want to see those. But if you are familiar with scene states, which I, if you are, that's great. If you're not, please check out the video that I've previously done on scene states up there in the cards right now. You can find it there. I'd recommend watching that first because this will be a good way of leveraging design options, quote, design options into Inmotion. So what we need to do is basically set up our visibility within our scene graph to what we want each option to look like. So of course, if I have option one, I want to see option one and I only want to see option one. So in this case, I, this is how I want it to be set up. So then I'll just click refresh and then that's my option one. And so let's uncheck this one, check option two. And then I want to literally hide option one and three and only show option two. And then I will refresh option two. And if I click now option one or two, I'm just clicking it once. It's changing the visibility up here, which is really great stuff. And it doesn't necessarily matter if these are checked or not right now. So we don't need to worry about that. So then I need to set up option three. And if I click option three, it's currently set up to what looks like option one. So let's just unhide option three, hide option one, and then refresh option three. So now when I click option one, two, and three, we can see all of this update at the exact same time. And so maybe you are working with a designer and you're just you're trying to get a hands on look on what's going on. What's the difference between all these options? And you just go, here's option one. Boom. Here's option two. You look around, see there it is. And then option three, the clear difference there. Very nice. Very simple. With three clicks, we can jump between one option and the other. Easy. You know, this is it is pretty easy. So how do we update this stuff? Well, if I if I want to update option one because option one is live linked, all I need to go, do is go back into Revit, make my change within the option one, and then just click C in Twinmotion and send it back. And it will update only this option one. Now, if I end up updating option two or three, then what I need to do is, of course, re-export the FBX, which isn't that big of a deal. And then I'll come back in my, into my imports here and then just reload. And everything is, you know, as you would expect, updated and good to go. Now, let's say we're happy with this. We like this, but we want to take this a step farther we can go and set up views, like literally image views for each one of these. And I don't really care about the image itself, but what I wanna do is utilize presenter, like an actual presenter mode. And so I've got each one of these three, and because I have these scene states set up, I can associate each one of these images to a scene state. And then whenever I add that to a, a, the presenter, then I can jump between each one of those very quickly. So how do we do this? Well, within each image, of course, I just need to go to more and then camera, and we'll see over here all the way at the right, we'll see scene state. And I wanna make sure this scene state for this first image is set to option one. Cool. So if you wanna get even more organized, which I recommend, I would call this option one. This image is option one. Do the same thing for option two, because that's what we want, option two, and then finally option three. So we ultimately have three separate images 
that are linked to these scene states. So again, I need to come in <clears throat> to more scene state and make sure I have option two set up for this particular image. And then finally, go into more for option three, go to camera scene state, and then put that on option three. So I have now three different images and we can kind of see the same thing that we have with the scene states. I can click on all of these different images and view them and see the difference because it's changing the scene state and it's changing the visibility. So we're, you know, you could see the chain of events that we're doing here. And so finally, now with all of that, I'm, I am going to save it, but we can come into presenter and then we can add a presenter and I just want to rename this to options. You know, we, we want to stay organized options. And so now we can click more and we want to make sure camera movement is on free. If, if that's something you care about, maybe this is literally like you're staying in this one location and you just want to see the updates. That's fine too, but we want to be able to freely move around. Okay. So really all we need to do is add our media. So we'll click our media and we'll look at this. We have each one of these three, one, two, and three. Very simple, not too difficult. Now we could get a little weird if we decide, you know, I actually want this option two to be an alternate and then option three to be an alternate. I don't really want to do that, but you know, that's fine. We're going to leave those as alternates off right now. And so, you know, if, if some of this looks forward to you, please check out my scene states video first, of course, but then check out the presenter video. That's going to be really important. So with that, all I need to do is, you know, quit media mode and I can choose to export this as a presenter that I end up exporting and just stand alone if I want, but I don't care about that right now because I can pull that from here. So come up here to the eye and then presenter. And once I click that, I can see, cool, there's my options. I need to end up closing this again. And now I can go back into my presenter and I can see that I have option one, two, and three. And so literally all I have to do, and this is a nice presenter looking mode, I click one, two, and three. And I can, you know, of course I can play this. I don't know why I necessarily want to play this because it's just over a period of a few seconds, each one of these will switch from one to the other. So I don't care about that. I just want to be able to click one. Like, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's look at this one. And all the while I can say, you know, oh, you know, look at it over here. What's it like from this perspective? Okay. But as soon as we remember, because I have this set up as an image, it's taking it from the image's perspective. And I'm just going to start here, which is a good way of organizing. You know, you kind of know where you're going to end up, where you're going to start and what you're looking at. So gosh, I like this is a great way of working with design options. Now, I will say this is, of course, not the best way because the best way is currently not within Twin Motion. I wish Twin Motion allowed us to live link multiple, either multiple options or something like a better integration. And maybe that's coming down the line. We can check the roadmap and hopefully it is. But in the meantime, this is not a bad way of utilizing design options. We literally have everything set up here. We have design option one, two, three. Again, we can update them all, whether you have them all as FBX files or have just one, one of them as the live link and then the others as the FBX files. Again, they're so easy to update that way. Add them into scene states. Scene states are just updating my visibility. And then finally, I'm taking that, making those into images and using the presenter to literally click on them and see them just like I would over here in the scene states, but in a better looking mode, a presenter mode. You know, it looks more professional. I can jump between one and the other very quickly. So really, that's it. You know, I, we covered everything we can as far as design options because design options themselves are not within Twinmotion physically. We just have to end up making them a part of Twinmotion based on the tools that we already have. So if you did happen to learn something, which I sure hope you did, please demolish that like button. That really helps me out a lot. And so also check out those other videos, the both the scene states and the presenter. They're going to be very helpful and you will want to know how to do that if you're interested in doing design options within Twinmotion. So again, that will do it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.